For most people, and for other sources of information about the Galactic Federation, or about the United Federation of Planets, same thing with different names, none of which are truly correct as they are obviously humanized, it is some sort of organization of pure love and light that guides humanity from above and that will liberate it from its oppressors. And that is where the first problem starts as it is always about to liberate humanity and never does. Salvation with them, is always around the corner but never comes to fruition, and this logically makes many people fall into thinking that those who say this are only charlatans that use the subject to earn money online, and to sell books. And for others this is a clear indication that those groups who push the Galactic Federation of Light and its claimed existence, are paid agents who are spreading misinformation and so-called, hopium, in order to control people's perception as part of the heavily government-controlled New Age movement. And then we have yet another point of view, the one of my predecessors who have said that the Galactic Federation is who controls humanity from well above all the long list of repressive organizations that in reality, or ultimately serve them. In my opinion all those points of view have a lot of truth to them, and a lot of misconceptions there as well and this is indicative of what I said above, that this subject is extremely complicated and difficult to address. What comes next is my informed opinion about what is truly going on, and I must remind some of you, the new ones, that I'm not on Earth, I'm on a large starship in orbit, and I've walked the long passageways and the halls of the Federation's local headquarters in the Andromedan biosphere ship, Viera. I'm not human but I lived on Earth for five years as a step down, I arrived there when I was eight years old and I left when I was thirteen. Having lived there on Earth as a human without being one for five years, being from outside Earth where I am right now, gives me a unique perspective about the entire picture of what occurs on Earth, with both perspectives, the human level one, of how things are seen from the surface and also how things are seen from up here from the point of view of my group and from the Federation's point of view as well. Having said that, on the other hand, being up here does not mean that I can know everything that is going on, the same way as if you live in the United States, or in England you don't necessarily know everything that is going on there. So I can see a larger more expanded perspective perhaps, but as anyone else I can only give my points of view based on what I see here and with the best information available and with my best intentions as well. And this subject is so complicated, and so extended that I must address it through several videos, as there is so much information no single one can hold it all. What I see going on is a super complicated multi-density, multiracial and multicultural mess that no one seems to fully understand, regardless of what level or what role or post he or she may hold within it, yet many things are clear enough to be asserted as facts from where to start to analyze the whole situation. The Federation does truly control in full everything that surrounds Earth, meaning that I see no signs, and no possibility of any kind of regressive invasion taking place or going on right now, nor in the recent past and nothing in the future either. The whole galactic quadrant is fully under federation control, and I need not say that, that organization is gigantic and extremely powerful as it is made up of countless races, species, and their cultures that work together in good cooperation. I can even say that many races that are taken to be regressive by many experts on Earth, like reptilian Alpha Draco, and tall grey races, like the Atorthans, are friendly and cooperative with the rest of the Federation's members. Or at least they are being friendly here around this area where Earth is in. So in my perspective all the data I have available indicates that the Federation is truly the ultimate controller of Earth. The general situation in Earth's orbit is what follows. The solar system and Earth with it, is well inside Federation-dominated space, and also in a high-traffic area where countless ships come and go all the time. 
Earth is not hidden, far from it, every single race knows it, and knows where it is, so the idea of humans not transmitting hello messages into space because it could call the attention of some invasive regressive race is simply ludicrous. From the bridge of this starship, the Talika, I can see countless star maps used for navigation, and I can see those of other races as well as they are included in the ship's navigation computer's data banks, and Earth is clearly included in all of them and under the clear description of being well in Federation-dominated space. Just because of this I can fully conclude that whatever happens, and whatever is going on on Earth, is indeed the responsibility of the United Federation of Planets, or of the Galactic Federation, same thing. The physical situation up here, is what follows. The Earth is artificially isolated by a series of rings of high-intensity radiation, the Van Allen belts, but are only effective, from the vibratory state many call 3D, as referring to the average vibratory frequency on Earth, or of Earth, because when above that frequency the etheric barrier, as others call it, simply isn't there and is in no way an issue, non-existent from 5D on, leaving 4D as a transition frequency range. Reminding everyone that densities and their numbers are used by me and by my group as a reference only, as we insist that a density is a state of mind and a range of perception of one or more individuals in agreement, and not something really physical, much less with any kind of barriers between them. That concludes that the so-called Van Allen belts, or the etheric barrier is only there from the point of view of someone earthbound and with an average mentality, and can be easily surmounted using mind and perception, only if the individual is spiritually advanced enough. Yet the radiation belts are there and can be measured with human technology and instrumentation, but only as high-energy ionizing radiation. It is even said that in the world of the spirits, if one is of a high enough vibration and spiritually aware and advanced enough, a soul can escape the etheric barrier, and if it is not advanced enough and holds a low vibratory state, it cannot cross the barrier and must return to earth to experience yet another incarnation there, as part of its spiritual progression and growth. Whether this is true or not, is nearly impossible to know yet there is information in the Federation's archives that does claim this to be part of the function of the Van Allen belts, and it also explains why so many people use the term, etheric barrier, when referring to them. The rest of the physical situation is as follows, there is a large Andromedan arrowhead-shaped starship, with full biosphere capacity permanently hiding behind the moon that in turn is also an old Andromedan biosphere ship much larger than the first, and that is largely empty and with few Federation races they're using it as a base. The moon itself is another very large subject. All space traffic and everything that goes on on Earth is closely monitored and controlled from the Andromedan biosphere ship, that is also the Federation's local headquarters where they constantly hold meetings among the representatives of the most prominent extraterrestrial races that are well known on Earth. Such as the Andromedans and the Arcturians, that hold the highest ranking chairs at the Council, followed by the Alpha Centauri, also called the Alphratans, the Antarians, Syrians, Etorthans, and countless other lesser known races. From there on, there are between 900 and 1,000 large ships that exceed a kilometer in length, constantly in Earth's orbit, mostly in between 200,000 and 500,000 kilometers from Earth's surface, and also thousands of smaller craft of all sizes and shapes all pertaining to countless star races. All those large ships and smaller ones go about their business every day moving from one ship to another, with the Andromedan biosphere ship. Viera as their main activity hub. Likewise, all those ships come and go from Earth's orbit all the time, and as I said above there are so many that as my predecessors once said, it looks like a human mall's parking lot any Saturday afternoon. This ship, 
The Talika is in low Earth's orbit where there are few large kilometer or more long ships, but from its starboard side we can see the lights of countless others far in the distance, sometimes even blending in and confusing themselves with the stars behind, although most of the time it is easy to see individual ships because most of them carry strobe lights of different colors to distinguish them clearly from the star field. The reason why there are so many ships in Earth's orbit is also quite clear, and from my point of view it is quite logical and does not require much speculation. The reason is that each race is monitoring their star seeds, their family on Earth, being there as star seeds or as step downs because, as I've said before in previous videos, there are countless full extraterrestrials living among humans and passing of as humans many with official human identities that help them blend into society effectively in order to have a human experience, and I also know this because I was one of them. All those star races orbiting Earth are not interested in the planet's resources, and there is no galactic war going on either. They are all here around Earth because of the people in general, and because of their people. They are family, as simple as that.